Welcome everybody to the this version of the Glad I Heard That podcast. Uh, my name is Eric Farrell. I'm your host for today, and I'm with a couple of friends uh, from our church, Bill and Tracy Gotchuk. They're here for us to uh, interview them about their relationship, so no pressure, you guys. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about today is a couple of concepts that we see throughout Scripture about the value of throwing logs on the fire of our relationship. So everything we talk about today is going to be centered around this idea of a campfire or a fireplace and the need to continue to add logs to that fire in order to keep that fire roaring. So if you can make those parallels to a relationship, that would be great. We're going to get to know Bill and Tracy a little bit because many of you may not know them. So I want to spend some time kind of asking them some questions just to help you guys get to know their story a little bit better. So when is it you guys met? Like how long ago? I know some of these answers, but some of them I don't recall. You say. Okay. (laughs) In in college, uh, we started dating in 1992. We kind of met through a mutual friend of ours that kind of helped set us up. And then um, we went out on a date without even really having talked at all. No, this is before cell phones. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> How did we do it, actually? I know. <laughs> Are you still friends with that guy, by the way? Yeah. Mark. You right? still connected to him? Yeah, yeah. Whatever? yeah. Okay. Yep. And how young are you guys right now? Oh, that's sweet. I know. I did that, <laughs> actually. 48 and 49. Yep. So you guys are real close in age, too. Yeah. Um, do you remember what first attracted you to each other? And it's okay if it's physical. It's not shallow. You can answer physical. that way. I remember, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I remember meeting you at a party and thinking you were funny we mm-hmm. were you were playing a game like a board game or something yeah and and then seeing you um he played soccer in college and i would uh-huh. go watch him play soccer but i remembered that you were funny yeah so. it was 100 percent physical <laughs> <laughs> when uh when you would go to watch him play soccer did did he know you were there do you know or did you I go occasionally know. without him knowing probably i did yeah okay so it's now a tiny school there weren't a lot of spectators okay so he probably knew um, yeah. Did you think about her in the stands when you were playing soccer? There was like, no did stands. you try to bend it like Beckham? Or <laughs> oh anything? yeah, yeah. I would uh, make sure I was doing my uh, best work when she was there. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a small school, so you know, when there were spectators, you, you know, you would know there somebody. There was three, three of us. So, yeah. oh, nice, very nice, very nice. Okay. Yeah. And you guys have kids, so why don't you tell everybody how many kids you have, how old they are in that situation? So we have four sons. Um, Riley is 21, John is 19, Ben is 18, and Abiddy is going to be 16 next week. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. No kidding. Not that I didn't know you had those kids, but <laughs> I'm actually impressed that you rattled off the ages because I have a hard time doing that when people <laughs> ask me how old the kids are, depending on when their birthdays were especially. So what I'd like to do today, as I said in the intro, is kind of talk with you guys about this concept of throwing logs on the fire. So the relationship is the fire. The logs are the things that we do to keep that fire going, right? And the intention is not to ever have us um, take an ex- a sample of our relationship on our honeymoon and like the goal is to maintain that. Like that's not the goal necessarily at all. Um, but it's acknowledging that there's certain things that we can do for each other that you guys do for each other. Um, that contribute to keeping that fire going. Knowing you personally, I know that's something that's important to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here. I also know you enough to know that you're not perfect at it. So it's things that you guys have learned over the course of time. And for those watching and for myself personally, um, it's very valuable for us to be able to learn from other people because what we can do is apply what it is that we heard as an idea that we've never thought of, or actually uh, something that you know, you've know you screwed up on or I've screwed up on. I found that helps out uh, people oftentimes as well. So with the idea of this throwing logs on the fire, there's four specific things that we're gonna um, talk about that are an example of a log that you throw on the fire. Number one is paying attention to each other. Number two would be this idea of getting away. Number three would be working hard on each other. And then the last thing would be this concept of delighting in each other, which we'll talk about how that word's weird later. Um, But that's kind of the idea of what we're dealing with in that regard. So when it comes to paying attention to each other, this is kind of foundational, right? Um, you, you, You both have careers. You both have friends. You have girlfriends. He's got guy friends. Sometimes you guys all get together, but at the end of the day, um, you kind of got 
even though you're you're doing life together, you have areas where you have your own busyness and you have your own commitments. Okay, so talk to us about how paying attention to each other has been important for your relationship, um, primarily because. I'm guessing it doesn't come natural to you guys, but maybe it does for one of you. So kind of talk about if it comes natural to you to pay attention to each other and what paying attention to each other kind of looks like in your relationship. It, it's something that we've developed over time, how best to pay attention to one another. And I, I think we do it at a time where it feels most natural. Like one routine that we've kind of developed together is in the morning we we sit together and we have coffee. And, you know, that's when we... You know, each might do a Bible study, and that's also when we kind of catch up. And I think, in part, that's when we're our best and our freshest. Um, and then maybe another time at night would be, um, you know, after dinner, where we kind of okay. sit around the uh, start cleaning up. The kids go off, you know, leave, and then we kind of sit around and, and talk. And so that's when we have each other's attention the most. Because yeah. I find after. As I've gotten older, it's harder for me to pay attention. It's it's definitely more effort. Yeah, that's become a nice routine. It's a blessing because of our jobs. Right. <clears throat> Allow us to have a slower start in the morning than maybe some people. Like we're not racing around running out of the house mm -hmm. by six or seven a.m. Mm -hmm. So we and when we don't get that time, we notice it. I mean, we'll sit there for sometimes an hour. Oh, that and, is. Nice. And we're not even necessarily talking non-stop but we're available to each other so You're like present right yeah usually he's doing a bible study on his phone and i'm sitting in, with a book and we might like you know but when you have that space carved out it gives you the ability to talk if something's going on or not it, you yeah. know, it doesn't really matter it doesn't feel like oh i haven't seen you i haven't seen you all week and so i have all these things i want to tell you and then it's too it's stressful so right yeah because yeah. i remember like when the kids were younger the busyness of that almost made communications urgent. Like, I, I'm going to download all this stuff. Here's what's mm -hmm. going on with the kids at school. Here's all the stuff that happened. And so it was more, yeah. um, I don't want to say transactional. That's not the right word, but just like uh, business-like oh, communications, yeah, sure. you know? Yeah. And sometimes dates even turn into that, you know, yes. if you're not yeah. careful. Like, you're, right. We'll but it is ourselves. time you get to have to with yeah. each other. I was going to ask, actually, because, you know, if, if, if uh, those that are out there that are listening that have young kids, you know, you're kind of thinking like, uh, well, that ain't happening right now. Us sitting down for coffee uninterrupted because we got diapers and toddlers, right? Right. And yeah. so um, do you remember, was this something that obviously you're in a comfortable place being able to do that now, but earlier on when the kids were younger, were you getting that time or you no, really weren't? we were and doing that. Do you wish you were like, or was it not possible? Like, what would you say about we, that? We had the huge blessing of having <clears throat> a family local that would take care of and watch the kids a lot. And okay. we recognized it at the time that it was not necessarily typical. And we were very thankful, like both our parents and, and we had great babysitters and that kind of thing. Um, we would get, not maybe when they were infants, but when they were like middle, elementary, middle school, um, and I think it might have been your idea, I don't recall, we had a dedicated Wednesday night date night. And we did something together outside of the house every week. And I remember our friends thinking that, oh my gosh, how do you have time for that? How do you do that? Again, mm -hmm. you have to have the babysitters either paying them or not, but. Um, yeah. And we didn't always do something like extravagant. I mean, we usually just right. like go do, I don't know. And I think during those times when the kids are young and things are really active, those dinners a lot of times look like just back and forth, mm -hmm. uh, here's everything that happened. And I, and I think we both remember, because of that, some of those times you find yourself arguing in a restaurant yeah. or something oh, like right. that, right. Uh, which is super awkward. Yeah, um, right. right. But, but because you don't have that, that kind of, all those uh, relaxed opportunities to have conversation, it, it does get intense because that's your only, it's, it's like you're fitting all of yeah. your week into, you know, one hour, or hour and a half. And well, in some ways you got to take what you can get, right? Like yeah. if this is our time together, I'd love to sit here and just, you know, find out about your week and invest in each other. But the truth is we got these issues going on. So this becomes a priority right now. And that's right. just what it is, right? Yeah. And even if we had a really rotten week, it wasn't like the next Wednesday, at least I wasn't thinking, well, I don't want to go out because we're going to argue. You know, I don't yeah. think we ever assumed we were going to argue. So. Yeah, right, right. Was, Sometimes yeah. we would say, you know what, um, we're not talking about the kids at all. And that was sometimes hard. And, and in fact, so much so that you 
find yourself sitting there in silence because you're yeah, like, right. that's on your mind. Oh, yeah. That's what you want to talk about, but it's right. kind of off limits. So that's yeah. um, that's tough. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> well, you guys really parlayed into the the thought of getting away um, as another log on the fire, right? So paying attention and then getting away, and. When people think of getting away, I think there's two main things that we think about. A, vacations, just because that's what it sounds like, getting away. Um, and B, like when we think about spending time with each other as husband and wife, um, outside of vacations, just on a <clears throat> weekly or monthly basis, it's got to be like a dinner and a movie, or it's got to be this, this grandiose thing or whatever. Um, when you think about getting away, what I'd like to do is normalize it and make it more attainable in this conversation. One of our favorite things to do right now, at least for me, is when we get to take the dog for a walk. We can leave our kids at home for that period of time, no big deal. Um, but that didn't cost us anything financially, right? Yeah, exactly. And so it seems like getting away, we've we've put it in this category of being not very attainable, either for finances or because it, it's going to carve out so much time that we don't have. So when you think about the getting away parts of your relationship, I want to talk about the vacation stuff eventually. But first off, to start with, what is the the weekly or the monthly or not even being militant about the rotation, but what does that look like for you? And what do you think are ways that have well, been beneficial to definitely you Definitely walking. Maybe not when it's 25 <clears throat> degrees out, but we'll, right. we like to just be yeah. together. We like to talk. So mm -hmm. we'll just go for a walk for an hour. And, and another thing that made me think of when you asked that question was when quarantine first hit, yeah. like two years ago. So Bill works from home almost 100% and has an office separate from our house. Right. It's a little building behind the house. And um, we would go out there and have, um, uh, like we'd get carry out and then we'd set up a little, he did, he set up a little table in there and put a tablecloth on it and a candle and he kept mm -hmm. it all in his office. He'd, when we were done with our date, which yeah. was, the kids were all in the house, we would just have our little dinner. Yep. He'd fold everything up, put it back in the drawer. Yep. So, because it, we had to do something that felt different than sitting at the kitchen counter you know yeah, so right, right. But yeah. that was something we tried what did you call that do you remember what you called that i'm, I'm afraid to recall <laughs> happy hour oh happy hour you yeah, called it did. happy hour yeah we did have happy hour <laughs> happy yeah hour we would hour. um that's right we would make cocktails and um we always enjoy um thinking of different drinks to make um we're not southern baptist so we can talk about this yeah right? correct <laughs> okay so um yeah, so we, we like uh, getting creative and finding new drinks and things like that to make. So uh, we've yeah. always enjoyed that. It's funny um, that for our um, wedding gift, someone gave us a picnic thing. Like the like little, a set? Yeah, a set. It's Maryland. Oh. Isn't that one that we... No, I think your Aunt Alice gave us. Oh, that. Aunt Alice, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, we still have, so we, we still, still use, have it. We still Is it like in a backpack or a yeah. basket yeah. Yeah. or what? Yeah, okay. it's got, it's got a, a little blanket yeah. and a simple little set in there. And we still use that thing to this day where we'll, um, she'll make lunch and it's like just leftovers. Like old fried chicken and then we go to the park and sit at, oh, okay. by the water and yeah. 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 Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. When you think about the grandiose, uh, things a little bit more, right? Like getting away, going somewhere, which is. I think if I could do that multiple times a year with my wife, I would love to, right? Okay. But when you think about that, what, what is what is your favorite vacation you guys have ever done? Maybe it's with friends or whatever, but it's not with kids, right? So it's you two, you two and friends. What is your favorite one and why? You got to answer that one. Italy. Yeah. yeah we went to Italy for oh, our 20th, 20th anniversary and... Bill has always been a really, um, I, I don't want to say it like it's a bad thing, like an extravagant gift giver or like when we're planning a trip, I, I'll try to keep it like, let's tamp it down. Let's not, you know, let's only go for X number of days. And he's always like, no, we're doing three days more than that. And like, yeah. so it's it, a negotiation. It is. And it's to like, it's so funny. <laughs> so that trip to Italy was supposed to be two weeks and it ended up being two and a half because Bill's like, well, if we're going to go all that way. Right. So that was a really, that was a fun trip. It was two and a half weeks away from the kids and we went to three different places and it was wonderful yeah and trip. and you know the, the thing about the you know that, that's a huge blessing to be able to do that I think one of the fun aspects of it is that you can spend a year planning it and we do like uh, one thing that I like doing is we did that when we went there when we went to Paris um, we recently went on a trip um, last year and Part of it is I like buying the books, like the travel books. So oh, it's right. like this thing, and and sometimes they've been like a, a gift, like okay, I want let's go here next. Yeah. And so I know she loves 
tra uh, planning and thinking about the planning and investigating hotels and just different places. So that's something that really engages her and it gives us the ability to talk about it. We're thinking about doing something this fall and, and it's like we're already having conversations Yeah, about because it. He'll, okay. he's a complete part of the planning. Like he, okay. he doesn't sit back and say, I don't care, just tell me where to be and when. Like he, it's part of the trip is the talking about it. Yeah. Where do you want, where do you so want do to you go? So do you enjoy that, that he weighs in on that stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's a way to, I think, um, build anticipation yeah, and excitement right. and um, it's 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 like uh, making a, a week or two week trip a nine month trip in a way yeah, yeah right you stretch it out and dream about it and yeah that's cool when you when you go away what is it about not being in your your southeastern Michigan not being here what is it about getting somewhere completely different for you guys that is most enjoyable do you try to like shut off the things back home um or do you not some people it's kind of hard for them to switch to vacation mode that happens to be me it's hard to make that switch yeah. so is getting away make it easier to focus on each other like getting a yeah, part definitely. away i mean okay. we we just went to greece this summer for um our 25th anniversary and it was so nice because we just enjoyed each other. Like mm -hmm. we did thing, we did some really adventurous things and had yeah. a wonderful time. And we actually went with another couple that is amazing to vacation with. And we um, we just enjoyed each other every day. And there wasn't all the distractions okay. naturally, yeah. right? And you were able to completely shut off a of work for a while. And yeah, yeah I mean, obviously it, it's something that over the years we've gotten better at it. It's easier to transition to that setting because we've practiced it, like right. we've done. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just on the work part of it, it's like you have to, you really have to work ahead um, to make something like that a success or the best success you mm -hmm. can. And, you know, over time you realize, you know, you're, you're expendable at work, you know, all the things that you sacrifice, not that they're not important, uh, taking your job seriously, but, right. but like, you can, you can take that time for you and your, your spouse and it, the world's it's not, it's not going to end. And right. so, you know, I think a lot of it is we, we build up this huge importance of, right. of having to be present, email, text and stuff like that. And so over time it's taken practice, but I've become better at just shutting it off. Well, and what's interesting about what you guys have talked about so far, <clears throat> okay, is day two of your marriage, this isn't where you were. Oh, no. You know? And so it's like, I think about early on in, in our relationship, and I, I kind of wish that I would have learned some of these things earlier. Every, most everybody says that, I suppose. But, I mean, really, to know that early on, some of the things we're talking about are not attainable in the way that they are now, but they still are attainable within the context of no matter where you are. And I think too that it's it's uh, not that it's not a head knowledge <laughs> thing, but I do think it's a practice thing. Mm -hmm. So so a lot of the things I think we do right now, it's not like we're discovering the truth of them right now. It's that we've worked at putting them into practice and it's difficult because you know, you're changing behaviors and the way you think, and you're doing it in the context of a relationship. And I think early on, speaking for myself, you spent a lot of time trying to change your spouse into oh, sure. the re to get the relationship you want rather than change yourself, you know? Okay. The next thing um, that we're really <clears throat> kind of leaning into is this idea of working hard, right? And I know that you guys have worked hard on your relationship. I'm sure you've had apathetic moments, you know, passive moments, but generally speaking, you've worked hard. Um, talk to me about how you've, you're thankful to each other that you didn't have to convince the other person to work hard, but that it yeah. was a mutual intentionality and that you're grateful for that. So Yeah, so w when Bill and I were married two, two to three years, probably two years, we were still living very separate lives. We lived together, we had jobs, we both were going to get, to get our um, graduate degrees, and we really were like two ships passing the night because yeah. we would work during the day and go to school at night and we hardly saw each other. And so it was, we weren't doing the best job of um, figuring out how to live together. And so, um, Consequently, we were living separate lives in, in a sense, and so we weren't really thinking of the other person. And so it was 
we got to a point in our marriage where we really didn't we care for each other and it was mutual and we knew it. True. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna pray. <laughs> so you say what you did. Yeah, so, um, you know, the way I, I recall it is, um, you know, I, we were struggling in our marriage. You know, I think uh, I definitely had done a lot of damage. And so um, I wanted uh, to basically, um, in a way, show, I think show Tracy that we could still save this, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we talked, we agreed on going to a, um, a weekend away in Port Sanilac, which Great destination. It's a lot um, here. <laughs> we're talking like 23 years ago, so I don't know what Port, Port Sandalac's like now, but uh, 23 years ago it was even less. <laughs> um, and so we went there, I think, for like a three day weekend, and we brought our, um, our marriage materials that we had gotten in our uh, marriage counseling at the Catholic Church we got married, and we kind of. Um, yeah, hold up with a couple bottles of wine, and um, I mean, Literally, that weekend was a turning point in our in our marriage. That helped get it back on track, and it, and it was it was uh, not very good at the time, and it was headed to some place even worse, and um, that turned it around for sure. Well, and you know, it's it's uh, <clears throat> you'll never forget that weekend, right? Yeah. Um, but my guess is that you know you you look at a moment like that and you say this was a stake in the ground from this point on. It's going to be different. But what I, what I would uh, want to point out is, but that doesn't mean from this point on it's going to be easy. No. Right. Um, it doesn't mean from this point on we're not going to have these issues. It just means we're going to pay close attention to them and we're not going to let them go under the rug, right? Yeah. We're not sweeping them under the rug. You know, TV and movies kind of give us the impression that working hard is just not part of the equation. And I think for the believer in Jesus, um, to the calling that we have as couples and how we're to treat each other, um, how we're to love each other well and how we are to exemplify Christ to other people. That's a high calling and to try to do that without Jesus, without working hard, we're just going to miss yeah. what's most valuable about our relationship. So I appreciate the fact that you guys, um, you know, see the value in working hard. Um, I know for me, when I get to experience couples that um, are intentional about working hard, it's actually refreshing. It's refreshing to see other couples out there that say this is important enough to me that I will do anything to not only keep it together, but to help it thrive and to become something yeah. that is beautiful. Um, because if Christ let working hard <laughs> um, deter his mission that God sent him here for, he wouldn't have died on the cross. Because no one's gonna say that was easy. I'm thankful that you guys work hard. Um, I'm thankful that that's a priority for you. Um, and I think because of that, you're able to, what scripture talks about is delight in each other, um, which is not a word that we use. Like I don't tell Donna, come home from work and go, Hey, how was your day? Great. You know, I really delight in you, sweetheart. Like I don't, I don't say that. Um, so if we could try to put it in layman's terms, um, what it looks like for you to delight in each other, um, because we are delighted in by God. Scripture tells us this. He delights in us. We are called to delight in Him, and our marriage is to reflect that relationship. Therefore, we delight in each other. What does that look like, or how did, when you hear that word, what does it bring to your mind? I mean, I think about <clears throat> it um, enjoying uh, her presence. Um, I'm, that's you know, that's what immediately comes to mind. Um, and I think when you enjoy somebody's presence and you really um, long for it. I think that's when you're delighting in the person. You've kind of um, figured out uh, how to see per the other person in their best light, to see past all the things, the little idiosyncrasies that you know might get under your skin at times, and just be f fully present and enjoy you know the interaction. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I hesitate to use the word comfortable because it almost sounds like a you're not working, but like sometimes mm. I'll be with my girlfriends or mm -hmm. um, you do something fun and, and it's like, well, this is, sometimes it's not as fun as if I was with him. Oh, so okay. I, I know that we, you know, we just like to be together. I think um, enjoying being around each other, knowing 
that you have to work hard at these other things, still being able to delight in each other, which actually it may become easier to delight in each other because you've worked hard on certain things. I think there's no um, argument that delighting in each other, enjoying spending time with each other is an, yet another one of those logs that we can put on the fire. Um, the last thing that I wanted to kind of ask you guys about and touch on as we close up is the value in each other knowing that you're not going anywhere. How can, how would you say that in your own mind, knowing that Tracy's not going anywhere, that Bill's not going anywhere, um, how has that helped you through some of the more difficult times, you know, of your relationship and well, family? Well, we have a little joke that we say to each other, <laughs> and I think about it, like when, when stuff's um, really outside of us, really bad, or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm laughing, but I'm, I can think of 10 things right now. Um, we'll say to each other, I'm so glad I don't hate you. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And that's sort of our way of saying, thank goodness this, this, this is, is working. Good. This is good because the rest of it is a, you know what, uh -huh. and uh -huh. we don't yeah. have to, not that we take for granted, but I'm, we don't have to also console each other. Okay. You know, I already know that this is good. So right. it makes it easy to handle the tough stuff. If you don't trust one another and trust that you're in it for the long haul. I mean, how can you do the hard work if if, right. if if it's conditional? Right. If it's, okay, unless we fix whatever problem right now within some specified time period, you're gone. How, how can you have the space to, and I think the mindset just to, to do the hard work? Right. It's almost like if you if you don't have that commitment that you're not going anywhere, it's almost like you're constantly living under an ultimatum. Yes. Right. You know, like this implied okay, listen, threat. The, we all know you've got two strikes, and so yeah. I'm out on the third one. It's just a matter of when that shoe's going to drop. Which I, I would have been let go a long time ago if that was the case. <laughs> I, I did this whole marriage with I think two strikes, uh, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so. Um, and, and, I, and, and I appreciate that we're able to sit here and laugh about it, honestly, because all these different aspects of keeping our relationships fresh and keeping that fire going, which let's not ignore the fact that um, there's a number of times when you take a look at the fire and you're like, oh my gosh, this thing is almost out. I didn't realize, you know, and then you realize you got to reinvest, you got to do certain yeah. things. And, and, and situationally, depending on where you're at in the relationship and what's going on in your family, mm -hmm. You, you're picking which log you're throwing on. It's like, oh, we need to get away. Like that just needs to happen. Yeah. We're carving it out and, and it's gonna happen. And so you pick which log it is, if you will, um, to throw on the fire. So did you guys have anything else that you wanted to add? Well, just kind of a, you know, picking up on that point. I, I think that is the best place to start, um, whether you're struggling or whether things are good, is, is time with one another. But that's the first log I would reach for to give yourself space to develop that in intimacy or to, you know, talk through what the trouble is. I don't know. What do you think? It's a set time aside for that. Yeah, because we have a lot of different hobbies. It's not like we do, yeah. you know, we don't like the same movies. We don't like, you know, yeah. the same books, you know. So we find the things that we enjoy together and we make sure we do them. Well, it's refreshing uh, for me and hopefully for you to hear from a couple that um, has no doubt struggled, has no doubt had their ups and downs, but they actually like being around each other. So thank you guys. <laughs> um, that's it for this Glad I Heard That podcast. We're glad you guys joined us. You can like us, follow us, share us, and all that stuff that I don't know a lot about, but you know what you're doing. Um, so you guys, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again sometime soon. Bill and Tracy, thank you again so much for taking out uh, part of your busy day you're to welcome. share with everybody yep. your relationship. No